to the fate of the universe, we have to know how much energy is there, how much matter is there. The history of the universe is really a battle between dark matter and dark energy. Uh, these two forces are in opposition, and so both the history of the universe and its ultimate fate is really the competition between these two forces. The Big Crunch theory was a result of scientists interpreting that dark matter is the dominant force, but astronomers now suspect that dark energy might be much stronger. If so, the end could be dramatic and violent. It pulls apart solar systems, it pulls apart stars, and eventually it grows so strong that it pulls apart matter itself, breaks bonds, pulls apart atoms, and reduces everything to fundamental particles, and that's the end of the universe. The battle between dark matter, the force that holds the universe together, and dark energy, the force seeking to tear it apart, has set the universe on a path of destruction. If dark matter is the victor, the universe might collapse. If dark energy rules the cosmos, it could rip to shreds. The expansion grows so strong that it tears up the entire universe. It'll be a strange twist of fate. Dark energy, the force that propelled matter to form a magnificent universe, continues to push it outward and drives it to its demise. To find out if dark energy is in fact winning the battle, scientists will first need to know how fast the universe is actually expanding. The most remarkable feature of the universe is that it's expanding. Every galaxy is moving away from every other galaxy. When you look out into the night sky, you see distant stars, galaxies, clusters of galaxies they observe with telescopes, and they're all moving away from us. We can illustrate that with this balloon. As we expand it, we see that every dot drawn on this black balloon, like the night sky, is moving away from every other dot. But there's something else that we know about the universe, something else that we know about the expansion, that is that the expansion is getting faster. The universe is accelerating. The size of the universe is getting bigger at a faster and faster rate. And we don't know exactly how fast it's accelerating, but if it's accelerating fast enough, then something really dramatic could happen. The universe could end up tearing itself apart in a big rip. This is perfect. This is great that you rigged this up. So this is, this is a giant version of the demo that I do in class. Dr. Robert Caldwell attempts an earthbound experiment to show how dark energy affects the acceleration of the universe. He uses a paintball gun mounted on a truck. Yeah, and basically, I mean, we could adjust the angle in any way that you want it. What do you think about yeah, I this? Think, I think down at down the ground a little bit more. Know, is, uh, is the best so we can mark each How's time the, the gun fires. That'll be good. Let's try that. He sends the truck coasting down an incline. Earth's gravity pulls the vehicle downhill, which is similar to how dark energy propels the universe outward, causing it to expand. Gravity pulls the truck forward at an increasing speed. The gun fires paint at the ground at regular one-second intervals. Caldwell measures the distance between the paint dots to calculate just how fast the truck was accelerating. He'll use the data from this experiment to see how gravity's force compares to dark energy's force in the cosmos. We started thinking about the Big Rip when it was discovered that the expansion of the universe was accelerating. The degree of acceleration is not known, and it's the subject of a lot of effort by astronomers today to try and figure out exactly how fast the expansion is growing. What is the past evolution of the universe in detail and if we can glean from that, what is the future evolution of the universe? It's not known exactly how fast it's accelerating. There's some evidence that the acceleration is beyond a certain threshold. And beyond that threshold, there's a runaway effect that could take place and it would rip apart the universe. Good luck. Fantastic. I think we've got some uh, good data. Excellent. How do we measure this? Great. Give you that end. All right. I'll take this. 
five feet eight, eight and a half inches. The point of the paintball experiment is to find parallels between the truck propelled by the invisible force of gravity and the accelerating universe. I'm glad we got the long tape measure because it's really growing pretty fast, the interval. Within a few measurements, the distance between the paint spots increases by nearly seven times. If the truck were in space, at this rate, it would travel faster than 100 miles per hour within a minute and over 1,000 miles per hour within 10 2. minutes. They're getting big now. Here we got 42 and a half feet. 42, all right, 0.5. The question for Robert Caldwell is whether the same kind of expansion and acceleration are happening on a cosmic scale. What's the, uh, the the capsule made of? Is it plastic or something? Kind of? Gelatin. Uh huh. Okay. It's all biodegradable. Uh huh. So you could actually eat them if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah. This right here is the data that I took with Eric. The cumulative distance traveled by the car as a function of time, and that's beautiful. It's this nice parabolic shape. That's exactly what you expect for an accelerating body. Now over here, I've got another calculation going on where I'm uh, working out the acceleration of the universe. Robert Caldwell's calculation shows that forces on Earth are similar to forces in space. This demonstration, then, gives a sense of the dramatic rate of expansion that appears to be happening in the cosmos. By eye, it might be difficult to appreciate how good a fit it is, but uh, I can tell you that the weight of the statistics indicates that an accelerating universe is a very good fit to this data. If like the truck, the universe is continually accelerating, then billions of years from now, the universe might tear itself apart. While the distant stars and galaxies will be pulled away from, from each other, they'll be pulled away from us. But moreover, we won't have time to grow cold and lonely it'll actually be pretty exciting and dramatic and violent. Stars are ripped apart, planets are ripped apart, and even atoms are, are torn apart before the universe ends. It wouldn't happen for at least 50 billion years, but still it's an interesting fate for the universe. What would atoms ripping apart look like? Things like coffee cups are solid, Atoms join together to create something that will hold a cappuccino without leaking a single drop. Zoom in through the cup, like sailing through the cosmos, past the molecules and into the atoms. The solid cup is nothing more than a fabric of atomic particles that formed a bond to become matter. If these particles were to move apart, the bonds that hold this cup together stop working. The atoms no longer support molecules. The connections between the minuscule particles dissolve. Matter in the form of this cup ceases to exist. It disintegrates, gone from existence. This is the dramatic end that Robert Caldwell foresees for the universe. What you would see if you were standing on Earth or standing on some other planet that uh, happened to still be around at that time, you would see something that looks like a wall of darkness approaching you. And as the wall of darkness approaches, uh, stars would go out, galaxies would go out, and then eventually uh, that wall of darkness would surround the planet. And then pretty soon, atoms themselves are torn apart, and that's it. Just the wall of darkness shrinks down to a point, and that's the end of the universe. According to Robert Caldwell, that moment is still billions of years off, leaving plenty of time to refine the research. In a way, this is like a detective story. We're trying to figure out what is the culprit or who is the culprit responsible for the cosmic acceleration. We think we know its name. We call it dark energy, but we don't know the modus operandi. We don't know exactly how it works. And what's needed is more information, more information about the physics behind the dark energy. We want to know exactly what it does and exactly what it's made out of. And in answering those questions, we'll be able to figure out exactly what is the fate of the universe?
The Big Rip is one theory. Cruising just above Earth's atmosphere and peering deep into space, the Hubble telescope provides scientists with clues to a less violent, but equally unavoidable, end of the universe. Scientists now say the universe is expanding and that depending on how fast it is accelerating, it might end in a big rip where everything tears apart. It's also possible that it will continue to expand, but at a slower rate. The universe wouldn't rip apart, but would become dark, cold, and lifeless. If dark energy turns out to be constant, a constant property of space, and continues at the same rate that it is now, the universe will keep expanding forever, and it will be a very sad state, I think. In the end, it just chills out. Everything cools down. Evidence for the big chill and all of the theories for the end of the universe, in part, come from the Hubble Space Telescope. It has been orbiting Earth since 1990 and has an unobstructed view of the cosmos. The extraordinary images it beams back to Earth are amazing in their clarity and detail. And because of Hubble, scientists can make better predictions about how the universe will end. So here is an example of a, a very deep field that was taken by the Hubble Space Telescope, which literally you point the space telescope at a single region uh, in space. And if you looked at this from a typical uh, ground-based image before Hubble was launched, first of all, it's, it's a, literally a, almost size of a postage stamp. And so suddenly, the first Hubble deep field that was ever taken had 4,000 galaxies that looked just like the galaxies here that were never visible before from the ground. A tremendous power. Each of these smudges in their own right um, is another galaxy. Each one of these galaxies contains about 100 billion stars. Hubble sees more than just stars and galaxies. It just might be on to one of the key ingredients of space, an invisible ingredient that could put the brakes on dark energy's effect and cause a big chill. That's dark matter. Scientists talk about dark matter as the substance that holds the universe together and could prevent a big rip. Evidence that dark matter exists is seen in some of Hubble's images of nearby galaxies. It sometimes appears as though other galaxies surround them. The other galaxies are not really there at all. Rather, they are reflections of more distant galaxies coming from behind. Astronomers suspect this optical illusion is dark matter causing a weird distortion of light called gravitational lensing. The light from the more distant galaxies is literally bent by the curvature of space caused by stars and dark matter in its path. The more dark matter there is between Earth and the distant galaxy, the more the light will be bent and the greater the force to cause a big chill. The gravitational lensing is a tremendous tool for the astronomer because we can measure the distortion in background galaxies and use it to trace the distribution of dark matter on various scales. We're looking at a distribution of idealized galaxies here on the sky, and the light from these distant galaxies is passing through clumps of dark matter. What you look at is not really what's happening. Uh, it's a bit like wearing spectacles and not knowing that you're wearing them. And if you can tell how much that bending is occurring, you can map the dark matter, and you can also see, well, if there's dark matter there, is the universe around that dark matter behaving the way it should given the gravity or not. If it's slightly gravitating less, then dark energy might be changing in those places. Identifying which energy force dominates, dark matter or dark energy, will give scientists more confidence about whether a big chill or a big rip will be our fate. The best evidence shows dark energy as the driving force, but by how much? Solving this mystery depends on astronomers finding ways to measure how fast the universe is moving. On Earth, 
It's simple to determine how fast something moves. An airplane, for example, is relatively close. We can look at it and calculate its speed by estimating the distance it travels and timing how long it takes to get